Hello everybody, Corbin here from Zoco Marketing and I am really excited for today's video. Today we're, I'm going to be giving you a step A to Z on how to run Pinterest ads. We're gonna start from the very beginning um, on creating the, the first ad in the campaign and running through all the settings for you. Um, so be sure to tune in. Um, I'll have timestamps time down below on the different settings if you wanna jump around on whatever questions you may have specifically for Pinterest ads. But let's uh, jump right into this on how to get your first ad running. So the first thing you'll see is I'm on uh, one of my Pinterest accounts that I have here. Uh, this is a DIY blog uh, that I just have a lot of fun with. Um, but we're gonna come over here to ads and then we're gonna click on uh, create ad. So that's the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is come over here to this settings. Now, when we come inside of uh, the, the ads manager, so to speak, you'll notice that there are three different um, objectives. So the first one is to build awareness. The second one is to drive consideration. And the third one is to get conversion. So um, obviously the, the objectives of these are a lot different. This is more top of funnel actions, building brand awareness. And if you just wanna get your name out there but don't wanna get sales, this is if you wanna get like um, traffic to your website, um, just get as much traffic as you can. Uh, that's essentially the, the purpose of drive consideration. And the last one is to get conversion, which is actually to um, sell products or to get leads or whatever it may be. Now, if you want to run get conversions, you will have to set up your TikTok or sorry, your, your, your Pinterest pixel and you'll have to set up conversion events. I do have tutorials on how to do that if you're on Shopify or on um, WordPress down below. It's because you'll notice if I come in here and I click on conversions, if you see something like this, then you'll need to go and follow those tutorials and, sh and show you how to actually set up your conversion actions before you can run um, conversion campaigns. So I'm not gonna get into that in this video just because I already have videos for those, um, but I will talk about how to set this up through a drive consideration campaign, which most of you will probably start out with. And what I, and it is what I do recommend starting out with. And then as you get more conversions, then start optimizing for these conversion events inside of here. For these two, um, these I very rarely recommend people going this route unless you're like a very big brand, just trying to build awareness. Most of the time you're gonna wanna actually um, have profitable um, Pinterest ads and these these two options are the way to do that. Here, you're just going to spend a lot of money and get a lot of impressions, but maybe not as many sales or leads or whatever it may be. So um, now we need to go through and give this a campaign name. So I'm just gonna call this um, test. Call this test for YouTube for all of you out there watching. Um, and then the next thing is campaign status. We're going to have this active. So here, what we're gonna to wanna to do is this daily and lifetime budget. Typically, I recommend doing a daily budget. And if you're just starting off or just experimenting with Pinterest, you can start for as little as $5 a day or $10 a day um, in some cases. So uh, we can just keep this right now for $5, um, keep it really easy. And then ad schedule, you can, can uh, run it continuously, which is typically what I do. Or if you have a certain campaign that has an end date, and you, or you're one of those people that forget that the ads are running or to pause them, then definitely make sure to run an end date, but we're just gonna do run continuously here. And that is everything on this page. We're gonna hit continue now. All right, and here we are at the ad group level. And for the ad group name, I'll typically come back and name this after I've done through, gone through and, and uh, set up all the targeting options. And you'll notice here, the first thing you'll see is targeting details. And uh, there's a few different options that are inside of here in this targeting strategy. So you can either reconnect with users. So that means your um, current customers, remarketing lists, um, customer lists, essentially that you can go through and select this and upload those lists inside there, or you can target new customers. And this is targeting basically by placements, by um, uh, audiences and by keywords um, or uh, interest, sorry, interest that you'll be targeting. So that's the option we're gonna go through over for this video. If you do wanna run customer lists, just uh, simply select this option and then upload that list inside there. Um, pretty easy to do, but we're gonna go through um, find new customers. So we, we've selected that inside of there. And the next thing we're gonna wanna do is come, come over here to keywords and interest. And we can add an audience list on top of there as well if we would like, but I don't recommend it. If you are gonna run audience lists, go with this option to reconnect with users and keep those campaigns separate. But we're gonna come to keywords and interest. We're gonna click this down. And for today's ad, we're going to be marketing a, uh, I'm, I'm an affiliate for a product that's a, a smart, smart home uh, curtain opener. And I'll show you the ad here in a second, what that looks like. But I wanna basically find people who are interested in smart home, uh, smart home related gadgets so that I can run this ad to them. So we're gonna hit here, smart home. And then whenever you click this, sometimes it just drops you right down. But we will actually wanna do more targeting than this. We don't wanna just be smart home because as you see, the monthly active ads audiences for this is only 10,000 people. So it's very, very small. So we actually wanna also add keywords inside of here. And I'm going to um, uh, paste in some keywords that I've, and like I said, it's really annoying. It like drops you down every time. So sorry that that keeps happening, but um, I dropped in some keywords here for um, the, for searches that I would wanna show up when people are looking for my product or service. And uh, as you see now that we're in a, in a more 
uh, a, a better range that I would like to be in, and kind of in that middle between narrow and broad, uh, 150,000 or 120,000 people monthly active um, audiences inside of here. And as you see, we have smart home gadgets, cool smart home hacks. Um, if you come through here, you can actually figure out how many people are searching for these things. So if I type in this one right here, smart home ideas, you can see um, inside of, it gives you just, so smart ideas, 5 million plus. Um, there are a lot inside of here. Here are like related keywords essentially. So if you wanted to go through and find more in there, so I'm just trying to think if there's any other ones that would be good for us. Cause they do recommend a minimum of 25,000 which makes sense because you want to um, uh, basically show up as many places as possible for the specific uh, specific search terms. But I'm not going to add any smart ideas. <laughs> That's a little too broad for me. Um, but this is a way to go through and do that keyword research. I'm happy with these six that I have right here for now and this audience size. Like I said, if you wanted to add more, they do recommend up to 25 inside of there. It, in my experience, it, it doesn't really matter as long as you're you're not too narrow of an audience. Now, the next thing is to go through and select our demographics. Now, um, well, why does that keep happening? It just keeps bumping me down. So uh, I don't care. I want to target male and female. But for me, I do want to target a specific age range because most most likely people who are going to be buying this are going to be homeowners. And so I do like to, to advertise that people who are 21 plus just because generally speaking, those are the people that are going to be ha have houses inside of there. So we're going to um, uh, hit 21 plus inside of this uh, option inside of here. And then we will target all US locations, English, devices, you can pick a specific device. Uh, well, I keep doing that. If you want to, for me, I will target all devices. And then the last thing down here is um, ad placement. So uh, for your ad placement, sorry, that keeps scrolling down there. Um, you'll notice that there are two different places that you can show up, the browse and the search. And what that means is if you come over here to Pinterest and you come just to your, your home screen, this is essentially the browsing ads. Let me show you a couple of examples inside of here. So if we scroll down and find one of the promoted ads, you notice here, Lowe's, here's a promoted ad. So this is the browse feature. I'm just on my home screen and I'm browsing through Pinterest and finding different things. And that's definitely somewhere where we will want to show up. So we're gonna leave that one checked. And then the other one inside of here, you'll notice is search. And that's for when somebody actually types in a specific keyword. So say that I come in here to um, Pinterest and I type in, um, let's see. Let's just say backsplash. Go through here and I'm sure we will see ads showing up yeah, right here, the Home Depot right away. That's, uh, they're showing me an ad for backsplash. So the Home Depot is actually bidding on this term backsplash and it's showing up right there. So that's the difference between those two. If you are running these ads, I do recommend keeping both of them checked. Um, there are very few cases where you'll want to um, only have one or the other um, showing inside of there. Now, the last thing is for bidding and customizations. Um, I've been testing out the bidding strategies for automatic and for custom. I don't have an answer on which one's better yet. I've had mixed results. So I do recommend you coming through and testing this for yourself. I will say that for the custom bid controls, average cost per click on Pinterest is around 10 cents to $1.50, which I know is, is a pretty big range inside of there. So if you're just starting off, I do recommend coming in at you know a lower a lower bid seeing if you're getting impressions. And if you're not, then come back and increase that bid later on um, uh, as you go. So don't start off with like a super high bid because Pinterest will spend your money and maybe the results won't be great. For me, I'm gonna start, I like to start around um, 20 cents if it's a brand new campaign and I don't have any data inside of there. 20 to 50 cents is probably a good a good way to go. Now for the actual um, pins, there are a couple of different things you can do. You can actually come through and create um, a, a new pin and the ad for that specifically or you can go to the pins that you've created or pinned before and actually pull it directly from here. So we're gonna come here over here to boards and I'm going to go to this um, smart home gadgets. And as you see, I just have a little um, video on how to set up these smart curtains, which are actually really cool um, to do. And uh, so cool gadgets for home. We're gonna select this right here and there's our ad. If you come in here, um, it's sending, as you can see, it's sending directly to this referral link that I have inside of here. And I wonder if I can play this video for you so you can see kind of what's like. Nope, uh, I guess you'll have to check out that my Pinterest account and look at that video if you wanted to see what that looks like. We're going to hit cancel here. So there is our ad, it's all ready to go. And like I said, now that we've done the targeting, I do like to come back over here to the ad group and this is going to be smart home users or smart home. Interests. Um, smart home interest and then we want keyword targeting keywords as well. So that way I know that it's smart home interest and people who are also um, searching for those keywords inside of there. That is all done. Our targeting is done. Our budgeting and schedule, optimization delivery, and then we have our ad. Now we are going to simply uh, hit publish. 
once we get published, we'll see something like congrats, your ad is published, you're ready to go. Um, oh, we do need to add billing information. So I'm gonna go through and fill out this billing information and get this campaign live. Uh, going forward, I do plan to create a lot more Pinterest ads related content and Pinterest organic strategies as well. So if Pinterest is something that you are interested in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I will be building out a lot more um, tutorials on how to do that. And thanks for checking out the video today and we'll see you in the next one.